Alright, so today we're going to be solving uh, 2015 EGU Pass Paper Second Session Mathematics Course 1 Basic Course. Last time we solved the uh, Section 1 Question 1, so now we are going to do Section 1 Question 2, which is a problem on combinatorics and probability. So, let us simultaneously throw three dice which are different in size and denote the number on the large, medium, and small dice by x, y, and z respectively. Let a be the event where x equals y equals z. Let b be the event where x plus y plus z equals 6. Let c be the event where x plus y equals z. Question 1. The numbers of outcomes in event a is j. We are supposed to find j. And in event b is kl. In event c is mn. So first, let's figure out what j is. Now, first we need to understand what the problem uh, is talking about. So they say here that they, they're going to throw three dice and they're in different size. Basically, the size, the size doesn't really matter. What matters is you have three different dice and they didn't specify what type of dice it is. So um, it's going to be the typical dice with six faces. So we they denote the number the number on the dice, on the large, medium, and small dices, the three different dices as x, y, and z respectively. So if you look at the possibilities of x, x could either be 1, or 2, or 3, or 4, or 5, or 6, like any dice. And the same thing for y, it could be 1, or 2, or 3, or 4, or 5, or 6. Same thing for z, it could be 1, or 2, 3. The first question is rather simple. The number of outcomes in event A. What are the possibilities such that x equals y equals z? Basically, what are the possibilities that you will get all the same numbers for all those three dices? The obvious answer is 6. Uh, why is that? Well, if you, you look here, possibility number 1 is that x will equal to 1, y will equal to 1, and z will equal to 1. So they're all equal, x equals y equals z. Possibility number 2 is if they're they all equal 2. And as you can see, there are a total of 6 possibilities here. 6 possibilities. So the answer for J is 6. Now for event B, this is a bit uh, more interesting. Event B is such that the number on the large dice added to the number on the medium dice and you add it to the number on the small dice will give you 6. What are the possibilities? First, um, write down the number 6 and put a equal sign. Since you're using uh, typical dice, you only have numbers uh, 1 to 6. So figure out like what are the ways in which you can add three numbers from 1 to 6 that will give you 6. The first possibility is 2 plus 2 plus 2. The second possibility is 3 plus 2 plus 1. The third possibility is 4 plus 1 plus 1. Now you have to find the total number of possible combinations. So let's look at this first one here, 2 plus 2 plus 2. There's only one possible way to get 2 plus 2 plus 2, which is to get the number 2 on the large dice, the number 2 on the medium dice, and the number 2 on the small dice. So in total, there is only one way. However, if you look at 3 plus 2 plus 1, let's look at x, y, and z. There is more than one possibility to get 3 plus 2 plus 1. You, x could be 3, y could be 2, z could be 1, or x could be 1, y could be 2, and z could be 3. That's also another possibility because 1 plus 2 plus 3 is also equal to 6. So how do you find the number of combinations possible? Well, this is basic uh, I guess it's called arrangement. So the number of arrangement, I'm gonna just give you the answer, it's 3 factorial, which is equal to 3 times 2 times 1, which is 6. And for 4 plus 1 plus 1, that's basically saying that for x, y, and z, you could have x equals 4, y equals 1, z equals 1, or x equals 1, y equals 1, z equals 4, and more. So the number of possibilities is 3 factorial over 2 factorial, which is 3. So your answer for the number of possibilities for event B would be to take um, 1 plus 6 plus 3. 
So your answer for KL is 1, 0. Uh, for those of you who don't understand this part, um, I'll explain to you now. If you already understand, just skip to finding event C. So let's talk about what I did for this. This part, I'm sure you understand that there's only one way to get 2 plus 2 plus 2, which is for the large dice to be 2, medium to be 2, and small dice to be 2. But for this, there are more ways. And how do I know that there are 6 ways, 3 factorial? Okay, if you remember formula, if you were to arrange A, B, and C, you know, since there are 3 of them, it would be 3 factorial ways to arrange them. If there was four of them, like A, B, C, and D, there are four factorial ways to arrange them. Let me write it over here. Let's have a look at A, B, and C. You could arrange this as A, B, C, or A, C, B, or you could do A, a B, A, C, or B, C, A, or you could do C, A, B, and C, B, A. As you can see, there's a total number of six different arrangements. As I mentioned is, 3 factorial. If you were to take something like A, B, C, and D, you can sit and rearrange them yourself and you will realize that there are, there's a total of 4 factorial ways, which is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is equal to 12, 24 ways to rearrange them. If you have n numbers of characters, you know, like n, like if, if n equals 2, then that's like saying you have A and B then there's n factorial ways to rearrange them. Or oh, I also forgot to mention, they have to be different. So all those characters need to be different. So 3, 2, and 1 are different from each other. So the total number of rearrangements is 3 factorial equal to 6. Now let's have a look at 4 plus 1 plus 1. Why is it 3 factorial divided by 2 factorial and not like the above? Well, the reason being is because you have two, two of the same characters, 1 and 1. So for... so. Just remember that if you have like multiple characters like A, B, C, and then you have another C and they have D, the total number of ways to rearrange this would be 5 factorial over 2 factorial. So you would take the total number of characters, factorial, and divide it by the number of repeating characters, which there's two of them. Let me give you another example. If you have A, 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 B, and C, and C, you would... Uh, so there's five of uh, three, four, five, six, six of them, six factorial over. There's three repeating A's and two repeating C's. So you would have three factorial even multiplied by two factorial. And if you have, let's say, two more repeating D's, then you multiply it by two factorial as such. And this would become eight factorial. Okay, now for event C, it's a little bit more complicated. There's a pattern to it, but before you can understand the pattern, I'm gonna write, I'm gonna count all the possible events. So C is the event where X plus Y equals Z. The number on the large dice plus the number on the medium dice equals the number on the small dice. We know that X has to be less than Z, or oh, sorry, X has to be less than Z, and Y has to be less than Z, and Y has to be less than Z. If one of them is equal to Z, then, for example, if X equals Z, then Y has to equal zero, but that's not possible because Y can only be from one to six. So we could do some simple counting. Let's assume that the number on X, so we have X, Y, and Z. Let's assume that the number on X is one. Z has to be uh, essentially uh, the numbers from one to six. So you could have x equals 1 and y equals 1. And you could do x equals 1 again, but this time y equals 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, and 1, 5. And z, if you add x and y together, you get 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You cannot do 1 and 6 because that would equal 7. This would not make any sense. So let's take, let's say, what if x equals 2? Then the number of possibilities uh, it's gonna be less than when x equals 1 because you know 2 plus 1, 2 plus 2, 2 plus 3, 2 plus 4 and that's it. You cannot do 2 plus 5 or else you get 7. And then if you if you put uh, x equals 3, I'm gonna write down here, the possibilities get even uh, less. You could only do 3, 1, 3, 2 and 3, 3, that's it. 
If you go 4, it's only 4-1. Four, 4-2. Four, if you go 5, it's only 5-1. It's only 5-1. This would equal 4, 5, 6, 5, 6, 1. Hopefully, you can see the pattern here. Is that if x equals 1, if x here equals to 1, then there are 5 possibilities. If x equals 2, then there are 4 possibilities. If x equals 3, there are 3 possibilities. If x equals 4, there are 2 possibilities. And if x equals 5, there's 1 possibility. Therefore, the total number of possibilities for C here, I look here, would be 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 equals 9, 12, 14, 15. Therefore, MN equals 15. You could actually find, you could actually just figure this out without writing all of this out. If you realize the pattern here, you would realize that the number like gets uh, decreased by one at a time. So we know oh, it's five. Uh, if you start with x equals one, there's five possibilities. If you go x equals two, there's four. And then if you reach to x equals five, there's only one possibility. x can't equal six uh, or else then y has to equal zero, which wouldn't make any sense. Since, you know, z cannot be bigger than, than six. All right, number two, the numbers of outcomes in events A intersect B is O, and event B intersect C is P, and event C intersects A is Q. I hope you know what intersection means. Intersection, if you draw a Venn diagram, will be this part here. Basically, um, if set A, for example, if set A has uh, A, B, and C, if set B has the elements uh, A, D, and F, then the intersection of A and B would be A. So these guys here both have A. Uh, A has B, but B does not have small b, so we don't count. Okay, so that's what intersection basically means. Number of outcomes in events A intersect B, all right. Well, we know that for A, the events of A here, is either 1, 1, 1, or 2, 2, 2, and so on, 6, 6, 6, and so on, you know. The number of events B, as we mentioned earlier, uh, there was 10 of them. However, if you remember, we had 2, 2, 2, and then the other ones were just combinations of 3, 2, 1, and 4, 1, 1. For, for the event B, there is only one element in which x equals y equals z these guys these guys they will just be rearranged but you cannot get three of the same numbers so what does that mean it means a intersect b there's only one element which is 2 2 2 as you can see here a also has 2 2 2 therefore the answer for o is 1 now in event b intersect c okay well b it's either 2 2 2 or the combination um, different or the combinations of 3, 2, 1 and 4, 1, 1. Now for C, we have a lot as I've written before. So we know that for C, there is no 2, 2, 2. So let's I'll just focus on the elements of C that has 3, 2, 1 and 4, 1, 1. If you think about it, uh, event C is such that x plus y equals z. So 3, 2, 1 might not make sense, but you can rearrange that and say 1, 2, 3 would make sense because 1 plus 2 equals 3. For 4, 1, 1, no matter how hard you try to arrange that, you'll never get the same result as event C because if you have a look at 4, 1, 1 here, you could do 1 plus 1 and it will not equal 4. You could do 4 plus 1, it will not equal 1. So the only possibility here is to get rearrangements from 3, 2, and 1. So we've tried, we've already tried 1, 2 equals 3. That is correct. Another possibility would be 2 plus 1 equals 3. So the other possibility is actually 2, 1, 3. Because 2 plus 1 does equals 3. Therefore, B intersect C would equal to 2. So P equals 2. Because B uh, also has 1, 2, 3. 
as you know, because 1 to 3 is the com a different combination of 3 to 1. And B also has 2, 1, 3, because this is also uh, another combination variation of 3 to 1. And there's no other way. Now, let's look at event C intersect A. Okay, so the answer here is 0. And that's it's actually quite obvious. Um, if you look here, event A is such that x equals y equals z. But event C is such that x plus y equals z. And in this case, x has to be less than z. And y also has to be less than z. What does that mean? It means that x cannot be equal to z and y also cannot be equal to z. Because of this, it is impossible that the set C would have elements that's equal to set A. It's just impossible. Let's look at an element from A. Element from A would be something like 1, 1, 1. There's no way that set C can have 1, 1, 1. Because if x equals 1, y equals 1, z cannot equal 1. Because 1 plus 1 is 2. z has to be 2. And if you take another one, like 2, 2, 2, if x is 2, y is 2, z is 4. z cannot be 2. So that's why it is 0. Now we have to find the probability of events B union C. Okay, so the probability of B union C is the number of elements of B union C divided by the total number of combinations when you throw the six different dices. So first let's find an S, the total. Since there are three different dices, each dice having six numbers, the total number of combinations would be six cubed, which is 216. Basically, if you have a look at x, you could, you have one until six. If you have y, it's one until six. z is also one until six. The total number of combination here is 6 times 6 times 6 because this one could go with these 6 guys. This one could also go with these 6 guys. And then this 2 could also go with these 6 numbers. Same thing here. And if you draw this web continuously, you will end up with 216 different con uh, combinations. Now we have to figure out... Uh, the number of elements of B union C. There's actually a formula for this, which is just equal the number of elements in set B plus the number of elements in set C minus the number of elements in set B intersect C. N of B um, is here, 10. So 10 plus N of C is here, MN, 15. Minus B intersect C, which we have found here too, equal to 23. Therefore, probability of B union C is equal to 23 over 216. And you cannot simplify this, so RS is 23 and TUV is 216. And that finishes question 2. Now, if you don't quite understand this part here, this formula, I'm gonna try my best to explain you. If you don't care, just end the video. If you're wondering, I'll try my best to explain you. So, we have set B here. There's elements in it, numbers, you know, or yeah, different elements. You have set C here, stuff in it, right? I'm just gonna erase it so it doesn't look so cluttered. If you're talking about NB, it would be everything here. If you're talking about NC, it would be everything here. Okay, got that. If you're talking about N of B intersect C, it would be everything here. We got that. If you're talking about N of B union C, it would be all of this. Here's the challenging part. Uh, if you look at this formula here, it says that n of b union c is n of b plus n of c minus n b intersect c. 
So let's take n of b first. This part here, n of b of this. Cool, cool, we shade it. Now let's shade in n of c. I use a different color now, n of c here. You'll realize now that in this intersection part, there's two layers. This has one layer, red color. This has one layer, pink color. This has the red color and the pink color, so it's two layers. I've mentioned before that um, n of b intersect c is this part here. This is only one layer. And if you look here, this is two layers. So since we know that this entire thing here is the same thing as saying n of b plus n of c, if you minus n b intersect c, which is this one layer from here, what you would end up with, you would end up with this one layer and then this one layer and then you would remove a layer from the middle so you would only have one layer left and what does this equal? this equals n of b union c I hope this graphically explains you the formula thank you